Conor McGregor under investigation over social media posts after Algerian immigrant allegedly stabbed women, children in Dublin. Do we still have to keep saying allegedly? I think we know by now, right? UFC champion and MMA legend Conor McGregor is reportedly under investigation for online hate speech after he spoke out in defence of Ireland and in outrage after the stabbing of five women and children in Dublin City Centre on Thursday. The Sunday Time reports that he is being investigated after his social media posts. Now, this is something that I briefly touched on when I covered this initial attack. How the police, the media, the politicians, their focus shifted from innocent women and children being stabbed to, uh uh-oh, the far right. Because they've got a narrative now to build. They want everyone to know that it's not the immigrants' fault who, who stabbed stabbed little children and women. No, no, no. This is now the far right's fault. I I saw Carl Benjamin, a.k.a. Sargon of Akkad, he tweeted that he had a conversation or something like he overheard a conversation. They were talking about the stabbing and the person goes, yeah, I don't know uh, too much about it. All I know is some far right guy stabbed a bunch of kids. See how pushing a narrative can work to your normie NPC friends and family who don't pay attention to this sort of stuff. They've been told that it was somebody from the far right and now the far right's a problem. Not the issue of mass immigrations of faiths, cultures and what else, I I guess you could say religions, into a country that doesn't mesh with them and therefore they go mental and start stabbing people. No, 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 it's the far right. And who's the far right? Anyone. Anyone who pushes against them. The suspect in the stabbing is allegedly an Algerian immigrant. He's in the hospital recovering from his injuries he suffered when he was stopped from continuing his attack. A woman and a five-year-old child are fighting for their lives after the attack. Now, apparently as well, this same bloke did something very similar beforehand. And they were all due to deport him. But, yep, you guessed it. Members of the leftist cult put up a stink and said, he's mentally ill. Let him go. Good one. After the attack, riots broke out in Dublin. These were roundly condemned by police and Irish politicians. Don't let any Irish property be took over unannounced. Evaporate said property. It's a war, McGregor said on X. McGregor lashed out at Irish government leaders and police. Officers had condemned the protests and those like McGregor who advocated for Ireland in the wake of the attack. And this is uh, now Connor on X. This is probably one of the things he's getting investigated for. Innocent children ruthlessly stabbed by a mentally deranged non-national in Dublin, Ireland today. Oh, and that was the other thing. They were all sitting there trying to say, whoa, 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 whoa. but he, 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 he was from Ireland. He's been there 20 years. Like, that makes a difference. You can be somewhere for 20 years and not want to mesh with where you are. But if you're getting paid by the government to be there... Why wouldn't you stay? Our chief of police had this to say on the riots in the aftermath. Drew, not good enough. There is a grave danger among us in Ireland that should never be here in the first place. Going back to the this bloke should have been deported. And there has been zero action done to support the public in any way, shape or form with this frightening fact. Not good enough. Make change or make way. Ireland for victory God bless those attacked today, we pray, McGregor said. So for that, he's being investigated. Minister for Foreign Affairs, Tanis, Tanis, Michael Martin said that comments advocating for Ireland and speaking against mass migration to the Ireland nation are essentially inciting hate. Do you hear that? When you point out that a politician's failure on mass migration is bad for the country, well, you're basically inciting hate and it's you that needs to be punished because let, let, let's let all have a guess of what's going to happen to this bloke. Uh, do you think that they're going to roundly punish him or deport him this time? No, no, no. There'll, there'll probably be, you know, statues made in his honour going by some leftist cultist mentality. He further claimed that voices like McGregor's are isolated and are inciting hate and, to some degree, incitement is unacceptable. See, they love using that, inciting hate. 
define what you mean by that as well, because that can mean anything. I, I can go on social media and say, I hate spiders. Am I inciting hate for other people to go out and start the mass cull of spiders everywhere? I'm allowed to hate spiders. And if you're seeing something that is stuffing up your country, you're allowed to speak out against it. You're not inciting anyone. Incitement is one thing. Hate is subjective. In response to those comments, McGregor took aim at Martin, bringing up the recent trial over Ashlyn Murphy's murder. Blame anyone but themselves, McGregor said. Typical worthless you are, Michael. Worthless and spineless. Ryan Casey called you all out last week, grieving the love of his life, stolen by porn scum. I wonder if he meant pond scum. And nothing but waffle from you all since. Zero action. McGregor went on to criticise the fact that residents in Ireland can vote in local elections, regardless of nationality, visa or citizenship status. He said that politicians support this policy in order to get votes. He is 100%. That sort of policy is purely the reason why these leftist cult politicians have mass migration. Because it just keeps them in power. Come over here, we'll give you free shit. All you've got to do is vote for us. And then they outvote the majority of the, uh, of the natives there in that country. It's disgusting. Now, just to rewind back a little bit, I mentioned in my previous video talking about this that the focus is going to shift from the stabbing and the victims. Now it's all going to be about the far right. We need to see an independent review of what went wrong. We also need to see an, a real commitment from government to tackle and target the far right, to ensure intelligence-led policing is tackling and taking them on. And thirdly, we need a commitment from government to give Gardaí the resources they need, frontline Gardaí, to ensure that we have more personnel. We need to see... Tackle the far right. Who are they? Who are the far right? Who is this idiot? I've, uh, I don't know. But who does she mean by far right? Well, we'll get to that very, very shortly. But she's not the only one. We've also got this lunatic. This threatening atmosphere is particularly impacting our migrant community. We all need to be very clear that migrants are welcome in Ireland. Otherwise, I can't keep my spot. They are our family, our friends, our neighbours, our loved ones. A diverse society only benefits our culture and our communities. How? Oh, because I get to eat at a curry store. Not to mention the fact that the country would grind to a halt without migrant workers who keep whole swathes of our public services and our economy afloat. But also being an absolute burden to the tax system and the people who have to sit there and pay for it. We owe them a huge debt of gratitude for their enormous contributions to our society. It is shameful that many of them now feel so unwelcome. Yes, it's shameful that the natives are seeing an uptick in assaults, rapes, stabbings. Yeah, see, now it's, it's the migrants that need to be uh, 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 fearful for their safety, not the natives who are getting raped, sexually assaulted, stabbed sometimes murdered from your imports for because you want to keep in power. And this is a little bit longer, but I just want you to see this. And it just points out that all of these politicians are totally captured by the woke mind virus and they hate you. While it's true that the Irish have known uh, a fair share of, of oppression. The reality is, uh, during that oppression, we still maintained our, our invisibility cloak of white privilege. And we often hear about white privilege, and it hadn't really occurred to me that I had white privilege as well, but now, listening to you, I understand that I do have a privilege. I think we shouldn't forget that our parliament still looks very male, very stale and pale. What's wrong with that? You sexist. You racist. Of course you can say that. You're a middle-class white man. And you sexist. So you view the law completely different to somebody who is a traveller, to somebody who is uneducated. Yes, see, in, in our country, we have things about, you know, not rap-paying women 
and that women are somewhat equal. But, you know, when you import a culture who doesn't share that belief, well, they have different views on the laws. I must be bad because I'm the white male. Educated to somebody who's maybe a member of the Roma community. So it is very, very different. You know that the law doesn't treat you the same. It doesn't treat you the same. Well, you, <laughs> as a white privileged man, how does my debt impact your life? I think it's worth putting on... <laughs> what? ...on the record of, of this <laughs> house, um, that, that concept of, of white privilege and, and how that can be uh, normatised in our own lives. And, you know, we, we as, uh, as we develop as a society in a more racially integrated society... Uh, have, have, have you all noticed a, a common factor amongst this montage so far? Yeah, I have. Uh, the other thing that I want to ask is, what is white privilege? I would love an answer from every single one of these p lunatics. I think need to become more and more conscious of that uh, within our own politics and, and the advantage that that has brought. But the corollary being that your whiteness is itself an advantage. And How? How? Give me one concrete example of how my whiteness is an advantage. You goddamn racists. To really understand that. I often observe young people as they walk. Oh, look at that. The demographic changed. Walk together. One of their party or two of their party will be uh, uh, from, you know, their, their background, maybe from a different country. And they are, you know, celebrating that and they are engaged in that much more so than the very dull, white, pasty Ireland that I grew up in. I What's wrong with that island? What was wrong with that island that was pre an uptick of murders, rapes, stabbings? Was that a bad time for the Irish? I think what we need to do in our own political system is to call out the hypocrisy of standing in a parliament like this, full of white people. You're in Ireland! I mean, you're not in the Congo. You're not in Japan. What the hell are you talking about? And saying is racism is something that other people do. Because it's what politicians here in Ireland do. Because the Ireland that I grew up in was made for people just like me. It was made for white, middle class, able bodied, heterosexual uh, men. The overwhelming majority demographic of the country. It was made for us. We've yes, you made it. You made it such a utopia that you decided that we need to start inviting more people here. You did that. Always run this place. We see ourselves everywhere. And if you walk around the walls of, uh, or, or the halls of, of this esteemed uh, uh, building, you generally see people who just look just like me. People from Ireland. I mean... I, I just made this point, but if for some reason I managed to move to Japan and managed to get into Japanese politics somehow, I would not be shocked if I were walking around the halls of Japan's parliament and seeing lots and lots of Japanese people. You goddamn racist. There is obviously a, a fairly obvious deficiency in what we're doing. We're basically a room full of white men talking about racism. Um, so just to name that. Um, one thing I strongly agree with the deputy on is the need to target, set a target to have a, a number of people from ethnic minorities in areas of the public service. We've Why? Why do you? At no point do they ever tell you why you have to. These places should be based on merit and merit alone. Health service that's very diverse, although less so as you go up towards the senior positions. Uh, not so much in the Gardaí, not so much in the Defence Forces, not so much in the education sector, as the Deputy mentioned, not at all in the civil service, which is very white, uh, including the Department of Equality, for example, uh, and that actually needs to change. Why does it need to change? Please give me an answer to this question, that because things are like this, therefore it's inherently bad, and we must import change. Why? serious work that needs to be done in the context of Irish politics because even when you look at a male dominated you know politics who are the males dominating that and the majority are more privileged mm -hmm. um, are predominantly white there is very little ethnic 
visibility across any of that. So measures need to be put in place to start looking at that. Yeah, the last thing we want to do is replace a bunch of straight white middle class able bodied men with a bunch of straight white middle class able bodied women. But what if they're the only ones applying for the job? I can't watch any more of this because it just drives me insane that these these people captured by the woke mind virus, the people that I've mentioned before, in this leftist cult, they are just nothing but sexist and racist. And they're doing it purely to keep themselves in positions of power. See, they're not going to give up their positions. Every single one of those people, if you said to them, okay, give up your position. The answer would be, what, me? No, 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 no. No, the people I oppose, they need to give up their position. So where is this all leading to? <laughs> Sorry, I forgot about this one. Uh, an anti-immigration signage in West, West Belfast is being treated as a hate incident, police say. <laughs> Irish Lives Matter is a hate incident. Amazing. But where is this all leading to, my Irish brothers and sisters? And get ready for it, Australia, because it's coming here. Ireland's Green Party Senator Pauline O'Reilly. Let's have a listen to what old I, uh, Pauline has to say. When you think about it, all law, all legislation is about the restriction of freedom. That's exactly what we're doing here, is we are restricting freedom, but we're doing it for the common good. We are restricting your freedom for the common good. No, no, see, when we implement laws... It's to stop other people from infringing on your freedom. Like, I have the freedom to live. We made a law to stop people from murdering me. That is not in restricting their freedom. It is stopping them from infringing on my rights, on my freedom. I have property. It's mine. People aren't allowed to come and take it off me. Well, unless you're a goddamn communist Green Party member who think they can come and take it. No, the law was there to stop those people from infringing on my right. You will see throughout our constitution, yes, you have rights, but they are restricted for the common good. Everything needs to be balanced. And if your views on other people's identities go to make their lives unsafe, insecure and cause them such deep discomfort that they cannot live in peace, then I believe that it is our job as legislators to restrict those freedoms for the common good. Did you hear that? Let me break that down to a very simple sentence. If you say things that make people's feelings hurty, well, we're coming for you. That is what she is advocating for online hatred bills how do we how do we feel about that matter gang oh it, I, I know what you're gonna say yeah it's coming here to australia with anthony albanese's miss and disinformation bill you don't think that that's going to be part of it and these digital identity bills that they want to throw in there as well that if you say something well we're going to restrict your freedoms you made that person uncomfortable. You made that person's feelings hurt. This is insanity. I can't remember who was saying it. it was either uh, the Lotus Eaters or uh, on, on Tim Paul's podcast, but uh, Connor should definitely, definitely go back into Ireland and face the music. It would be one of the greatest things that he could do other than his MMA career. I would love to see the Guardi or whatever the hell they call their Irish police put McGregor in handcuffs in front of the entire world to see. That would be brilliant. Time to rise up, people of, Mel uh, people of Ireland. I almost said people of Melbourne there because, you know, it's almost the same goddamn place with these sorts of laws and restrictions coming in. But people of Ireland, time to stand up. And where are the politicians who are standing up against this sort of stuff? Connor, maybe you need to run. I don't know. All right, mate, thanks very much for checking out the channel and this video. Follow me up there and do the things down there. Are we done? Yeah, we're done.